Yo guys, what is up? It is Mushroom Gecko here, and welcome back to another <gasps> video. So, this video is a little different than the one that I usually make, and I know I say that with like every single video I make, but uh, today is more of a Q&A type video, because um, I got a few questions about my time at UMBC, what to expect, and um, specifically what the comp sci program is like. So let me actually pull up those questions real quick. Um, okay. So first question is from Cheryl Lynch, or Charlotte Lynch, my bad. Uh, she asked, I'm going to UMBC next year and was wondering if you liked having a loft bed and was also wondering if the top part of the desk, the shelf part, was removable or connected. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Charlotte, for the fantastic question. And um, yeah, so the loft bed was actually... Pretty interesting. I actually got the loft bed to save up on some space in my dorm. Um, it overall worked out very, very, very nicely. Um, I have a few gripes with it, mainly being um, you're going to hit your head a lot in the first few weeks. Um, so your desk is underneath of the loft. So what's going to happen is uh, trying to get in your chair for your desk you're going to be going ow, ow, ow a lot because you're going to hit that metal bar um, of your loft. Um, what else? Yes. So in the middle of the night, let's say you need to get up and go to the bathroom, right? Um, okay. So get, you get out of bed, you go to the bathroom, and you're climbing back up. You're climbing that ladder. You have to climb a ladder to get in, into the loft. It's not like some stairs like some bunk beds have. It's, it's a ladder. So, and uh, by the time you're you're back in bed, the ladder, believe it or not, I'm not sure if it's because I'm weak or if um, or if this is an actual problem. But for me personally, by the time I climb back up in my bed, um, I'm wide awake because of all the energy that I had to use to get down and get back up. So that's the few main things you're gonna be hitting yourself a lot, and um, you're gonna be wide awake if you have to take a lot of bathroom breaks in the middle of the night um otherwise it's it's a great option for space it's great for um for academics and such because less a space in the room that's being taken up you have more of your stuff more of a in a compact area so it's very easy to have access to a lot of different things really quickly um and i also like the feeling of just being suspended. I've never really been in a loft or a bunk bed. I don't really use those a lot, but just, just being suspended and near the ceiling is just so serene for some reason for me. A lot of you might have a fear of height and the loft may not be for you. Personally, in my sophomore year, I'm going for the um, for just the regular bed. I'm not gonna be really be doing a loft. Not that I hated the loft, but because, one, I want to see what a normal bed is like. And two, I, um, well, compared to the loft, it is because, like, space-wise, academics and, you know, just no more other stuff. Um, and two, just those gripes that I have, like, hidden my head. and I, I, I get up in the middle of the night quite frequently to go to the bathroom and just, I'll be wide awake all the night and you don't want to be sitting in your bed at 4 a.m going oh man i can't sleep when you have a test the next day so yeah um let's see what else i wrote down in my notes um i think i pretty much hit all the notes on the head on that one yeah nails on the head yeah so this next question comes from naomi smith Nick Naomi, I'm so sorry if I'm butchering your name. I I deeply do apologize. Um, so he asked, I got accepted to UMBC for the class of 24. Congrats, uh, for computer science. Awesome. Uh, could you make a video on what to expect and your experiences in the class? Okay, yes. So, what to expect in the comp sci program and the class? Okay. So I actually have a few notes um, here as well. So, okay, the comp sci program, you're gonna need a few things. There's different tracks, right? And in order to get into the comp sci program and to be able to expand your tracks, there's three tracks, cybersecurity, I believe IT and game development. I'm doing game development. 
Um, hang on, I may be wrong. Oh, cybersecurity. Hang on, wrong one. Cybersecurity database. My bad. Cybersecurity database in game development, not IT. IT is different. Um, so yeah, I'm doing the game development track. Um, you don't have to pick a track. You can just do standard comp sci. Uh, that's a that's a thing as well. And um, so what you need to expect for your first year. First of all, if you took any APs in high school and you got credits for them, and um, and UMBC accepts them, you're set pretty much. And if you have, oops, and if you have um, calculus, if you have calculus A, B, and B, C, or calculus one and two, or whatever you want to call it, you're golden for your first and second semester. Because your first and second semester is calc one and two. And if you don't already have calculus, this is what happened to my roommate. If you don't already have calculus, you're gonna you can't take the standard 201 class at least that at least that's what his counselor told him you can't take the standard 201 class when you get in you have to take like a remedial or like a fluff comp sci class while you're waiting for your comp sci or for your calculus to uh, to finish and and pass your your calculus um i don't know why i don't make the rules but if you do have calculus or you have to take like calculus two, your first semester. Uh, you can take two hundred one straight away. Two hundred one, uh, CompSci two hundred one is Python. That is your first computer science class for your track. is uh, it's, it's a Python class. Python is a very very beginner friendly language, but do not expect to walk through that class. I've been coding since I was in middle school, right? And in high school, I did all the comp sci classes that I could. I took every single programming class that I possibly could. I, I took HTML classes. I took Java classes. I took Python classes. Um, thing about Python is it is completely unconventional compared to other programming languages. Conventional in the way that it does not use the same syntax um, as other languages. So it doesn't use curly braces. It uses tabs. So it teaches you good tab management in your code, which is fantastic. Your code in Python will not run if you do not space your tabs correctly. But don't get afraid. You will learn all that in the class. Um, but I've seen too many people walk in there with the mindset of, oh, I, I'm just going to take comp sci because money. And I'm just going to take comp sci and breeze through 201 because it's Python. And no, you, you, you can't go in there like that. Um, and considering my experience, I actually, I'm going to admit this. I did not study for a majority of my comp sci tests, and I got bees on them. And you're probably thinking, but Mushroom Gecko, bees? Bees are fantastic. I'd kill for a bee. Yeah, but you need to study. I mean, I went in there with the mindset of, I have been doing this for a long time. I can do it with my eyes closed, to both arms tied behind my back. Give me a pencil, stick it in my mouth. I'll do the whole test and get 110. percent No, 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 no. You can't. You can't do that. You have to study in um, in college. You definitely, definitely have to study for comp sci, even if it is as easy as Python. Um, because not not that the class is hard, but they're very, very, very picky on their standardized tests. If you do not do it the exact way they want you to, you will get points off. And I I got those Bs, not because I didn't know the material, but because I got those points off because I did not follow their conventions or because I didn't do it the exact way that they, they, that they wanted. So you have to be, you have to pay attention. You have to be very keen on what they want. Okay? And it, it's not like, and I'm not throwing shade on professors or anything. I, I loved all my comp sci professors so far. They've all been fantastic. They're brilliant people. But their tests, they loved throwing curveballs for their tests. So Python, I describe it as a language that you can teach a monkey. Because Python, because it does not follow the coding standard and syntax and just 
generality of most other computer science languages or programming languages. My Alexa has, um, the keyword is computer. Yeah, don't activate. <laughs> so as I was saying, um, Python is easy and it's way different from other comp sci or other programming languages because you're, it's almost like you're writing a paper. That, that's how I can describe it. It's almost like you're writing a paper because um, Python has no replaces the standard like and and or symbols. Those are just like the main um, things I'm going to be using as an example. They replace the standard symbols with actual words. So the double ampersand in most comp sci lang or programming languages to signify and um, is actually spelled out and. Same with or. Instead of using the two lines, it's actually spelled out or. Um, same with for each loops and just loops in general. Instead of doing like for this double ampersand this blah 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 right like how our for loop is laid out. It uses like for like variable name in each blah blah blah. So like for dog in list of dogs and then you enter down and tab over and you have your statement like you're writing a sentence you're, you're literally writing an english sentence to tell the computer what to do uh it, it doesn't use the standard symbols as most comps like um as most programming languages which i think what trips up a lot of people in 202 because if you have not been programming if you have not done a lot of programming in your life and you start out with python and be like this is easy and then you and then you go into 202 202 is probably my favorite comp sci class so far um 202 is c plus plus if you don't know what c plus plus is um if you've heard of c or java or any of them i consider it is i think it's more user friendly than java in the sense that java wants you to write out like the whole entire Bible <laughs> for one thing, like in bot, like in C, yeah, in Java, you have to do like system dot out dot print line, and then you do what you want to output on the console. Whereas in C plus plus, it's just like C out, and then two lesson symbols, and then whatever you want to write. Which it's great in that sense, but if you've ever done Java or any other language that does not have a lot of heavy memory management you're going to probably struggle a bit in this class because C++ and the class and the way the class is set up, it's a lot of memory management. You have to be memory leak free. And if you're like, what's memory leak? Then what's this? What's that? You're going to get all to that, but pretty much your code has to be flawless. Not really in terms of performance, but it has to work and it cannot have any leaks and it cannot have any flaws at all in like any of your projects. So it, um, actually, real quick, in 201, you have weekly homeworks. But in 202, it's entire project. It's entirely project-based. You have no homeworks, um, at least in my class. You, you had no homeworks. It was entirely project-based. So C++ uh, follows the conventional programming languages um, structure, as I was describing before, as instead of writing out and, you have to do the double ampersand. And when people go in there and uh, they get and they have Python still in their head, it's going to confuse them because they have to get used to all these symbols now and a whole new different syntax. But if you've been programming for a while, you probably look at these people and be like, why is it hard? Like, why is it hard for you? This is just how every programming language is. Um, but they just keep that in mind, that the switch from 201 to 202, if you have not done programming at all in your life or you've done very little programming, is a drastic, huge jump. It is, it is incredible of a jump, okay? So you have to be on top of everything. I've seen a lot of people do well in 201, but they've struggled in 202 because of just the, the big drastic jump of syntax change.
And uh, the last comp sci class um, that you have to take as a requirement to pass your gateway is comp sci 203, which is discrete structures. And pretty much what that is is the logics class. It's a logics and math class. Um, so I don't really know how to describe it too much, but it's like it teaches you uh, Boolean algebra, which is like algebra of ones and zeros, and it also teaches you uh, truth tables and all these different things. It just teaches you the logics and pretty much um, just the different ways you can do things in computer science. Uh, it's, so it's the logic behind how computers think and work, the logics behind um, how you can set up a statement to do what you want. Um, it's just a very logical and very um, mentally heavy class because you have to, it's like a puzzle. That's what it is. It's a puzzle because logics, um, two or three, that's the, that's the best way to describe it. It's a puzzle. You, uh, you have to be able to piece together different things to form logical outcomes. And that sounds hard, but 203 was actually very easy, uh, in my opinion. There were obviously some very hard parts, but in total, it was a very easy class for me. Um, so yeah, after, after you take uh, calculus, you're going to have to take what's called linear algebra. And you're like, algebra? How, how could something with algebra in the name come after calculus? And I don't know why it wasn't for me, but a lot of people took, like, matrix math in high school. Like, in, in pre-calc, a lot of people that I've talked to have done um, matrix math. Um, and my new upcoming roommate and I have never done matrix math in high school. We actually took, we took linear algebra, and that was the first time doing matrix math. Which um, it was so so new and just so weird to us. But um, if you if you've done matrix ma matrix math in high school and like pre calc and such, you'll you'll do fine linear algebra. Um, but if you've if you've never done matrix math, you might want to look into that and learn the basics of it before you go into the class, because the first few weeks it was very just <laughs> it was so new and it was just kind of hard to wrap my head around. Um, so yeah linear algebra it's just math with matrices which it sounds hard but once you get used to it it becomes a lot easier and a lot clearer um what else do i have to say i took a lot of fluff classes in my first semester so i had to actually take a remedial spanish class oh that's another thing if you are still <laughs> if you are still early in high school or you're in middle school or something, and you're planning on going to UMBC, please, please, or just really any other, like, college, but please, just do yourself a favor and take the level four or AP level of that, of that language. Because when I got to UMBC, because my high school told me you only need two years of a language because that's what most colleges want. Um, that was not the case, or at least for UMBC. They wanted level four or AP for their language. So I had to take a remedial Spanish class my first semester, um, which took up a space that I could have used for something else, maybe linear algebra. But I, but I had to take it the second semester. Um, and then you have to take the 201 level. You, you need to take the 201 level equivalent course of that language. So I had to take a remedial Spanish class because I've not done Spanish since, uh, please ignore my dog, <laughs> since, whatchamacallit, uh, my freshman year of high school. After my freshman year of high school, I just kind of considered myself done with Spanish. Two years done. That's what my college wanted. Uh, you, need, you need level four or higher um, languages. So... I had to take their remedial Spanish class, and I had to take two of one Spanish class the semester after. Um, so just make sure you're on top of your languages. And um, yeah, just, so just be prepared with that. So I, I also took like some, um, I, I took 
some gen eds as well because you need a lot of gen ed requirements and i mean like a lot of gen ed requirements it's kind of stupid um so yeah next semester for my first semester of my sophomore year i will be taking um comp sci 313 uh and 341 which are computer organization and assembly language programming so I think we're doing C and assembly language in 313, which are very low, low level languages. Um, so those languages are used for like operating systems and such. Uh, they're very low level and they're very like complicated and hard to use. Um, and for 341 data structures, that's another C++ class. Um, you need 341 for just comp sci in general. And that talks about like data trees and data management and uh, just, uh, data structures in general, uh, binary trees, you do more memory management. It's more focused on speed and efficiency instead of it working. Um, so yeah, after that, I'm looking at the thing right now. You need to take uh, 331, which is principles and programming language. Or pro principles of programming language. Okay, what principles of programming language is, I don't know. Uh, you also need to take 411, which is computer architecture, 421, principles of operating systems, 441, design analysis of algorithms, and 447, which is software engineering. Um, and yeah, right here, also the required math courses is uh, math 151, which is calculus 1, 152, which is calculus 2, and 221, which is linear algebra. You also need to take a statistics course, which is stat 335, which is the introduction to probability and statistics. Um, it also says statistics 451 could also be substituted for 355. Uh, and you also need to take um, two sequence science courses. Me personally, for my track, I need physics 121 for game development. So I'm going to be taking the physics track. So I'm going to be taking physics 121 and 122, which is just the introduction of physics 1 and 2. And then you also need to take just other comp sci classes to help fulfill your stuff um so yeah two comp sci electives there's computer graphics software engineering two there's computer networks principles of cybersecurity. um a lot of different things uh general electives uh as well as like history of computers and computing independent study of computer science uh for the game development track in particular i need art 380 <laughs> which is history of, in theory of games. Uh, like I said, introductory to physics one, to physics 121, uh, computer graphics. I need to take artificial intelligence. And um, if you're doing a game development track, you have a capstone game project, which is pretty much, you take all of what you learned, you mash it all together, you make a game for, um, for your final project to, uh, to, to pass, to, to graduate. Um, hopefully that answers some questions. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below. UMGC is a very fantastic college. I do not regret going there. I've met a lot of fantastic people. Um, I feel like the climate there is very welcoming. And the people there are very, um, are very open to acceptance of other people. Um, the teachers and professors and just all the staff there are fantastic. Uh, you will, I've had a few just eh, type teachers, you know, just those professors that are like, bruh, that, that just makes you say bruh, right? And I've also had uh, professors that I just love. They're like top, they, they rank my top five uh, favorite teachers of all time list, which is like kindergarten to now, right? Just they're, the professors there are fantastic. Um. My two, my 201 professor for comp sci, uh, Professor Hamilton. Oh my God, he's fantastic. And then Professor Professor Dixon for 202, also a great, great, great guy. I love them both. They are both fantastic professors. Um, I'm taking Hamilton again for 341, which is data structures. So I can't wait to have him again. Um, so yeah, I think that wraps up a uh, majority of what I wanted to say. I think I have all my thoughts out and more of what I wanted to say. Um, so yeah, just kind of like TLDR, wrap it up for the loft. Uh, I like it. Uh, nothing wrong with it. Just I want to choose to do it better next semester. 
just to see how it goes. Nothing wrong with the loft. It's very academic friendly. It's uh, very space friendly. Uh, you have everything right there, but you're going to have probably a few head bumps. And if you get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, you're going to just be prepared to be wide awake unless you can fall asleep like that. Um, and just comp sci in general, it's, um, it's, uh, it's a fantastic thing. I'm just rereading the question right here. Um, so yeah, to expect in comp sci, you just, you need to be on top of everything. You need to pay attention. You do need to study. Take lots of good notes. Obviously, you guys already know that if you're in UMBC uh, or have been accepted to UMBC. Um, so, yeah. Those who are coming to UMBC, welcome to UMBC. I hope to see you guys around campus. Um, if you have any more questions, leave them in the comments. And I'll see you guys around. So, yeah. Have a good day, everyone.